Father, would you hear the cry of every heart? Lord, we're grieving the loss of our loved ones in our assembly. We're also grieving for those outside here, lost loved ones too. Lord, would you be with every one of those families? May they know your comfort, your presence, your strength, your grace to cope at this sorrowful time. We pray, Lord, that the hope of the world, the Lord Jesus, would be with each and every family. And Lord, may they receive that hope that goes beyond the grave. Lord, we pray, we pray for those that are those that are critical, those that are going through tests and waiting on themselves and getting treatment, going for scans. We pray for every one of them today. Lord, we're trusting you. We're asking you to visit them. We're asking you to meet them, Lord. We're asking you to divinely intervene, Lord. One touch from the King can change everything. Lord, today we look to you we're not looking to anybody else. People feel us. We feel ourselves. But Lord, you never feel. You're always there for us. And so today we pray in the name of Jesus. May we hear good news. Thank you for those 13 brothers and sisters who went through the waters. Keep your hand on every one of them, Lord. Don't let the enemy steal their joy or rob them of their testimony. Lord, today as we stand in your presence, Will you touch every life in this church today? From the crest to the pulpit, every child, every adult, will you touch everyone? Lord, hear our prayers because we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember our country today. Lord, we pray for this we love. Heal our land and heal our nation in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, the same night which the Lord Jesus was betrayed. There's the pain. Betrayed by a friend. He took bread. When he blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take it. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Also, after the same manner, he took a cup. And when he had something, this cup was a new covenant shed for many in my blood for the remission or forgiveness of sins. For so often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you to show the Lord's death personally until he comes. And you're glad he's coming. This world's a mess. This world's a mess. But the king's coming. He's coming for those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb, robed in righteous clothes, waiting for the King. Wherefore, let a man and a woman examine themselves that eat not this bread or drink this cup in an unworthy fashion. Let's not do that today. He's coming. He's coming for you, brother. He's coming for you, sister. He's coming for us, church. Before he comes, he told us to remember him. So let's do that. He took bread. It's just a, bread is just a symbol. It's not what some religions say turns to the body of Jesus. It doesn't. It's a symbol of his body given on the cross. He died on the cross for you. Thank you for the bread, Lord. A symbol your body given and your love shown. Would you love him? Take a moment just to say thank you. Blood is precious. 
my name pierced his head with thorns, and his hands and feet, and the same with a spear. But they mocked him and beat him. His blood shed. That blood forgives our sins. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the cup. Aren't you glad he did? Just forget about everybody around you.
chapter 1, verse 10. You glad you're here today? Yes. Turn to someone and say, you're looking well. <laughs> hey, don't be asking anybody out for a date, do you hear me? <laughs> verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made through or by him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Do you feel the pain here? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right or the power or the privilege to become children of God to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God I read that again he was in the world and the world was made by or through him and the world did not know him he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The message that I have here this morning is entitled, The Saddest Tax in the Bible. The saddest text in the Bible. Bless your word to every heart today. May the word of the Lord change our lives. Draw us closer to Jesus. And let us be an example for others to follow. Let your word come alive today. In this house. And in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. These verses to me are some of the saddest verses in the Bible. Every time I read them, my heart is touched, moved, crushed with a deep sense of sadness and grief that someone so important should be treated with such indifference, contempt, and rejection. I see three things in our text this morning. Number one, verse 10, the unrecognized Christ. Number two, verse 11, the unwanted Christ. And number three, verses 12 and 13, the undeterred Christ. Let's look at them for a moment this morning. The unrecognized Christ. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world did not know him. The King James Version says the world knew him not. In fact, he created all things. Verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. He is the creator of all things. He also gave life to all things. Verse 4. And him was life and the life was the light of men. He, the light of the world, lit up all things. The light shines in the darkness. Verse 5. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 9. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. And yet, yet in verse 10, he was in the world and the world did not know him. What a sad day. The world didn't recognize its creator. Do you recognize your creator today? If you do, lift your hand. Do you realize that without him, you and I wouldn't be here today? Do you realize that without Jesus, the light of the world, you and I would still be living in darkness, lost, without forgiveness, salvation, hope, and a future in heaven. 
Even today there are those who blatantly refuse to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. God manifested in the flesh. In fact, Timothy, Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 3 and 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. Who was he talking about? There's only one person that fits this description. The answer is Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Savior, Healer, Risen Lord, and soon coming King. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, verse, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, and though he was rich, Yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty may be made rich. He came from heaven to this earth. Yes, he came with condescension. He left the splendor of heaven, born of a virgin, lived a sinless, spotless life, at 30, he was baptized in the River Jordan, like those the other night. His ministry, he began to turn the nation upside down. He preached the gospel of repentance, exposed hypocrisy, spoke of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cleansed the lepers, and he forgave sinners. God took on flesh and dwelt among us in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus. He came into the world, yet the world didn't recognize him. By the way, friends, the world never does recognize him. Jesus, the light of the world, still shines in the darkness, and the darkness still doesn't acknowledge or recognize him. He's the unrecognized creator they don't want to believe. They want to believe in evolution and everything else but the Creator. He's the unrecognized Christ. Number two, He's the unwanted Christ. He came on to His own and His own did not receive Him or His own received Him not. This verse is even sadder than the previous verse. I can understand the world as we know it, not recognizing the Creator. But his own received him not. That's painful. That's hurtful. That's sorrowful. He's the unwanted Christ. He came on to his own. That word own actually is ideos. It means one's own. It suggests a personal intimate relationship with one's very own. The question is who was his own? Well, there's several answers to that question. For example, he came, as I said earlier, to his own creation. He was in the world and the world was made by him, yet the world did not recognize him. Colossians 1 and 16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He created everything. The world, the mountains, the seas, the stars, the universes, you and me, yet his own creation didn't want to know it. Does that not touch a chord in your heart? What a sad day the creation rejected its creator. But what about this? His own people, the Jews, his own people. He came to what James, James Moffat says. He came to what was his own. Yet his own folk did not welcome him. God's so-called chosen people that we pray for every Monday night. The Jews rejected God's only begotten son. And they still do. But thank God we've heard 
Can we hang to tell me some of the Jews have come to know Jesus? And so are some of the Gaza Palestinians through this war. People are coming to know Jesus. Would you say amen to that? What about his own community? Mark chapter 6 verse 1. Then he went out from there and came to his own country. And many hearing him were astonished saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Miriam and Joseph, I'm sorry, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon, are not his sisters here with us also? And they were offended at him. Jesus answered them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own house. Now he did that many works there because of their unbelief. They didn't want them. William Barclay also brings it even closer. What do you think? What do you hear this? Even closer. His own home. It was in his own home that he came and his own people did not welcome him. Mark chapter 3 in the synagogue he preached. The word, he healed the man with the withered hand. He infuriated the church leaders. He ministers to the multitude, heals and casts out demons. He calls the twelve and sends them out on mission. Yet his own family weren't happy. His own family. Sometimes your family are not the best encouragers. His own family weren't happy. The King James Version said, When his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold of him. For they said he is beside himself. That word friends there means kinsmen or family or next of kin. His own kith and kin said he was mad. Religion on the brain. John 7 verse 3. Even his brothers did not believe in him. Matthew chapter 8. Jesus goes to Gadara. Deliver self-harming suicidal legion from 6,000 demons. The people come out and see this wild man legion clothed in his right mind and sitting at the feet of Jesus. What do they do? They beg them to leave the place. They beg them to go away. Why? His own people didn't want disturbed. Easy religion. Good living for a living. They didn't want challenged or convicted of their sins or their lives changed. He's the unwanted Christ. Unwanted. What about this one? In his own church. The church of Jesus, they rejected him. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, we celebrate Christmas. When he was born in Bethlehem, 20 to 30,000 priests were in the vicinity. They all knew when and where he was born, yet not one of them came to celebrate his birth. When he began his ministry and preached his first sermon in his home church, Luke 4 says in verse 16, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book and sat down. The response, all those in the synagogue filled with wrath rose up and threw him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went this way. It's hard to believe this is Jesus we're talking about. He came to his own and they threw him out of the church. By the way, the church in his day didn't want them. The religious leaders despised him. One of his own, Judas, betrayed him. The murderous mob arrested him. His own disciples forsook him. Pilate condemned him to death. The crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him. We will not have this man to reign over us. The Roman soldiers mocked him and crucified him on the cross. The church in his day rejected him. Sadly, today, the church in the 20th century is no different. In Revelation chapter 3, 
Jesus writes seven letters to seven churches in Asia Minor. The church at Laodicea is the seventh church, which some commentators believe is the seventh or the last church age before the Lord's glorious return. The last church age, age before he comes. And where is Jesus in the last church age? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's outside. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Jesus is outside the church door. And he's outside knocking to get in. You know what that means? The church in the last church age, they're doing church without Jesus. They're singing songs, praying prayers, preaching sermons, performing rituals. They're having transgender ministers promoting the LGBTQ and woke ideologies. Lifestyles that contradict God's word. They're poisoning whole congregations and perverting our children and grandchildren by pushing the RSA in schools all in the name of love and life. What about truth and honesty? And repentance. All in the name of love and light. All the way. The Lord of the church is standing outside the church door knocking to be invited in. Folks, if he comes in, he'll have to cleanse the temple again. The church in this nation is away from God. It has compromised every biblical principle and precept. It's watered down the gospel, preaching a false gospel that tickles ears and has taken many lost souls that are listening to it to a lost eternity. If God doesn't judge, there's no mention of, this, of sin, the fear of God, repentance, salvation, amazing grace, or holiness living. There's no mention of it. You can do what you like and go to heaven. God doesn't judge this perverse generation. You've heard many preachers say it. He's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment. It's time for the church to open the door and let the Lord of the church in and let him have his way. Lord, cleanse the church and cleanse the nation. Lord, start with us in the people's church in the other. The unrecognized Christ, the unwanted Christ, they refused to recognize him and they didn't want him. They rejected him. They crucified him on the cross and buried him in Joseph's tomb. But as somebody said, you can't keep a good man down because three days later he rose again. The, ser the Savior who we serve is alive. Can we give him the glory the day that he's alive? And because he's alive, lastly, number three, he's the undeterred Christ. He came to his own and his own received him not. That's the saddest text in the Bible, I think. But it doesn't end there. Thank God it doesn't. Because verse 13 says, But as many as received him, to then give me the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You born of God this morning? You born again of the Spirit of God this morning? To the person who received Jesus, he gives them the right or the power in the King James Version, the power or the privilege to become a child of God. If you're a child of God, you left your home. Who believe in his name, are born again, not of blood, that's family lineage. Not of the will of the flesh, that's good works, nor of the will of man. No, no, not a priest or a pastor can get to there, but of God. His power is unstoppable. He was raised from the dead and he can change anybody. 
His power is unstoppable. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. His passion is undeniable. The Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. Greater love have no man than this, but a man like in his life for his friends. His promise is unquestionable. Him or her who comes to me, I will in no ways cast out. Are you glad? Are you glad? What a privilege to be born again. What a joy to be saved. And what a hope we have, not only in this world, but in heaven. We're going to heaven. He's coming for his people. Jesus comes this morning. Would you look at me just for the last one? Jesus comes to you. He comes to you. Comes to you. Comes to you. He comes to you this morning. They didn't recognize him. Will you? They didn't want them. Do you? They didn't welcome him. Will you? Have you any room for Jesus in your busy life? Pastor McKim, please pray for me. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to become a born again Christian. I want to welcome Jesus into my life and my future. Pastor, I want Jesus to save me, forgive me, and change me. I want to become a child of God. Is that you? You come and invite him in. Open your heart's door and let him come in. Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm a bachelor. I need to come back to the Lord. I want Jesus to restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Do you want him? Open the door and let him bring it in. And I pray for you. The saddest text in the Bible. His creation didn't recognize him. He was the unrecognized Christ. His own didn't want him. He was the unwanted Christ. But there's others who did. Because he's the undeterred Christ. He made a way for every one of us to be saved. To be born again. To be filled with the Spirit and to go at last to heaven. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Maybe you're here today and you want to make room for heaven. Well, let me pray for you. There is a
raise their hands for salvation and restoration. Meet them, Lord. May they know that you're inside their heart. For those that have raised their hands believing and faith believing for a miracle, may the miracle be on its way. May that divine moment be theirs today. Lord, may we hear of miraculous news, of answered prayers. Lord, to want to end the service that we have to. Lord, would you bless every person as we walk out those doors today. Let us walk out the same way as we walked in. Let us walk out born again, filled with the Spirit, children of God, privileged to follow Jesus. Father, would you bless tonight online service? And Lord, would you gather your people tomorrow night at the call to prayer? And Lord, as your people pray, Lord, I pray you'll visit the Andrew and Newton Abbey Prayer Council. Lord, do something amazing. Thank you for those who've come to you. You're a good God. You're a gracious God. We pray that their lives will change. Lord, for those that are struggling with addictions, those that are having problems, Lord Jesus, will you set them free? Set them free. That they can live in freedom. Hear our prayers today, Lord, because we ask these things. Remember, we Patty Cleary's family, Lillian's family, Molly's family, Evelyn's family. Bless your people. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Before you leave, say,